Hey guys and welcome back, I'm Hannah and this is my channel Nomadic Unicorn and today I am going to tell you exactly how to pick the perfect backpack for your travels. Last week I chose my new backpack for Southeast Asia which is super exciting, it's my new baby, I'm going to name him and I thought that it's an area that a lot of people struggle with so I'm going to run you through my top tips and the exact steps that you need to take when choosing your backpack for travelling. Now when it comes to backpack, size really does matter. Coming from someone that has carried a 65 litres plus 10 litres backpack all around Australia, I can tell you this was way too big. So for my new backpack I have downsized. Originally it was going to be 40 litres but now my new backpack is 38 litres. And there are two different sizing aspects. The first is the capacity of the bag which is usually measured in litres. Smaller is better. Not only does it help your back and your shoulders carrying less weight, but it will enable you to use modes of transport that may be harder with a bigger bag. The capacity is worked out by the main part of the bag, and then the additional part of the bag, which was the 10 litres. And that, for me, was a zip-on part that went on the front of the bag, but for some bags this can be somewhere that is expandable and allows you that little bit extra room. Aside from the capacity, there is also on good bags and good brands different sizes which are usually small, medium and large and this essentially is your torso length and the length of your spine. So to measure your torso you need to find the top of your hip bone. This is where your hip strap will sit. You then need to find your C7 vertebrae which is this little pokey out one here. So the bag length should be from the top of your hip bone up to that C7 vertebrae there. My new backpack is an Osprey bag and I went to the shop to try the bag on and find the correct size which I highly recommend doing. However they do have a downloadable app that you can download to your mobile which actually takes a full length picture of you and measures your torso length for you. You may notice when you come to look at backpacks that there's both men's, women's and unisex bags. And the only real difference here is the width of the bag itself. With men it will be a little bit wider because of the broader shoulders and also the straps and the way they sit. Women's straps tend to be a little bit more curved which allows space for the boobies which obviously is not a problem for the men. Once you've got the correct size of your bag, the next thing you need to do is have a look at how you want the bag to open. The two main options are a top loading backpack where everything literally goes in the top of the bag or a side opening bag and sometimes there is a combination of both. Personally I hate top loading backpacks, it is impossible to find your stuff and I highly recommend you go with a side opening bag or one that at least has both options because it will make your life so much easier. This then should have narrowed your choice down a little bit and you need to start thinking about brands. There are many bag brands that you can pick from and I do recommend going with a good quality brand. Yes, it is slightly more expensive but the bag will last much longer and you also will more likely to get a guarantee or warranty with the bag which enables them to fix it for you or provide a new one during the lifespan of the bag itself. Another top tip is to buy a bag from a company that literally only makes bags. The quality is bound to be that little bit better because that is where they're getting their money from. It is just the bags. They're not focusing on other products. It is all about the backpack. Next up, I'm going to explain how to make sure that the bag fits you correctly. This is really important. The bag needs to be comfortable and it needs to fit correctly to try and help you avoid any injuries. I will always recommend going into the shop rather than buying a bag online because it is really important that you actually get to try the bag on and see how it feels. If you can get the shop to put a little bit of weight in, that will be really good because it will just show you exactly how comfortable the bag is. Try to get a bag with padding on the straps and on the hip belt. So first of all, you put the bag on. You then want to make sure that the hip strap is on the top of your hips and is securely fastened. You don't want it too tight, but you don't want any gapping. Next, you need to look at the shoulder straps. The shoulder straps ideally should have no gapping at the top. A good bag will offer you the chance to adjust it, and also a lot of the time they will have a tension strap which you can use as well just to tighten it. You want as little gapping here as possible, and as little gapping all the way around the shoulder straps 
and the waist strap. Next up is the chest strap. Ladies, make sure this is going to be comfortable for you. As you can see, this one fits me just here. This particular bag, which I'm going to review in Friday's video for you, does have a little adjuster, so you can slide the strap up and down, because this is a unisex bag, not just a women's bag. Once you've got all of the straps adjusted, you will know how secure the bag feels and how comfortable it feels as well. Security for your stuff is important when you're on the road and you do want to have a look at the security that any bag you pick has to offer. I always recommend having a bag that you can padlock. You can see that these little zip bits could be padlocked together. If you can find a bag with a chunkier zip on this particular one, the main compartment zip, is quite a chunky one and this is really good because there is a technique that people can use on the smaller zips that even if they're padlocked they can get a biro underneath and open the zip the chunkier zips will not allow that to happen so that is a top tip for you when looking at security on your bag another thing to think about is whether your bag is waterproof or water resistant and if it's not does it come with a rain cover you can buy separate rain covers if your bag does not come with one, but do remember they can fall off or be blown off in heavy winds. So my other top tip if your bag isn't that water resistant is to have dry bags inside of the backpack itself. Most backpacks will dry out pretty quickly, but it just protects your belongings in the meantime. Colour of a bag will be a very personal thing. I didn't go for a woman's bag because I found all of them to be extremely bright colours, blues, pinks and purples, and when I'm travelling, I like to blend in as much as possible. I don't want to be signalling tourist alert. We like, we just don't like the pink. On the flip side of the very colourful bags, it is easier to find at an airport if you have checked your luggage in. Aside from colour, another thing to look at is the bag's compartments. A bag with lots of compartments is an absolute bonus because it helps you separate out your things whilst on the road. And secret pockets or pockets on hip straps are extremely useful, so do have a little look inside the bag, not just how it feels, but how you think that you're going to be able to organise your things within it. And the last thing that is really important to mention is the price. Obviously you're going to have to find a bag that fits your budget. The bigger brands with the better bags are more expensive. The backpack that I've been showing you little glimpses of today set me back £90 and I'll pop around the screen as to how much that is in other currencies. It is well worth investing in a good backpack because a good one really can last you years. If you've liked this video and found it helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to this crazy little travel family, do so now. If you do have any questions, do pop them in the comments and I will do my very best to answer them. As always, I am available on social media as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest and my blog. All the links are down there. Until next time, guys. Much love. Take care. Bye.